In the next 10 minutes, I am going to show you how to create render and animation that will bring us back 50 years in time using Blender. After several years of making similar scenes, for this tutorial I tested a different approach to creating the scene. This seems to be the best method. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, more about that later. This is a short breakdown tutorial, a 3 hour step by step tutorial in which we create these two scenes, find on Patreon or by clicking YouTube join. Let's say we have an idea to create a scene from the 70s, where to start? You can try to imagine the scene in your head, but if you are not creative, it is easy to end up in future instead of 70s, or to get a scene for a cartoon or game instead of a realistic scene. That's why it's better to rest your brain and start with a reference photo. I found this shot from the 1973 movie F for Fake. The full movie is available for download at archive.org. When we have a reference photo, we can put it on a part of the screen and add elements and texture to the scene according to it. But I decide to go one step further and use part of the texture from the photo to help get the vibe I want. First, I remove the cars in Photoshop. Later, I will replace the bad parts with 3D models. We can directly set the background image in the camera settings. But if we draw a few lines in the FSpy program, we will get a camera with a background photo and the correct perspective. We can now model basic objects such as road and large buildings by following the background photo. Instead of now creating each texture from the scratch and moving away from the reference, I decide to project the background photo onto the 3D models. For that, I need UV project modifier. It is necessary to create a material with a texture that we use as a background image in the camera. After that, I use UV project modifier, UV map and resolution of the photo. A UV map needs mesh to project the texture correctly. This is where subdivision helps. You have to be careful here. The road is much longer than is wide, so the subdivision will add a lot more lines along the y-axis than x-axis. A few loop cuts along the x-axis are necessary. Now we have a low poly city with low resolution image that serve as a base that needs to be upgraded with high resolution textures. Given that the texture we projected already have baked in lighting, reflections and shadow from the environment in which was photographed, I connected it to emission node and moved the specular to zero so all models with this material no longer react to light. The texture is projected from the camera angle and you should know that this can work only in two cases. If we don't move the camera, if we move the camera but not too much. Considering that I have planned to make animation and move the camera, but not too much, I plan to use some of texture projected on building sense 3. But the textures that are close to the camera, I have to replace completely or upgrade with high resolution textures. I will do it with the asphalt texture first. I found these two textures on texture.com and mix it with the texture from the background photo. For the second texture, it is necessary to create another UV map so as not to touch the UV map projected from the camera. In the color input, I keep the darker parts with multiply blending mode. The part that goes in the roughness is especially important to me because it reacts nicely with the light. This detail is usually more shiny in reality if it is patched with liquid tar. 
I use the second texture as a bump. Before we continue with the tutorial, let's talk about Squarespace. Squarespace is only one content management system. With a single subscription, you can create a website, host your content, register your own custom domain name, sell products, track your site's analytics, and much more. You can start by choosing professional website templates that are divided into categories. After that, with simple drag and drop technology, you can customize every design detail, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can also sell your content and generate revenue from your content with a membership site. For example, if you have a premium content that you want to sell online, such as tutorials, newsletters, podcasts or something similar, membership sites are ideal to create a custom solution to avoid the commissions that you would to pay to some other services. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Bulgaria to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. Link is also in the description. Hotel in the background is a large and too much in focus to pass as a cube with a low resolution stretch texture, so I put more time into it. I upgraded the brick wall with a brick texture from the internet. First, I isolated the darker parts and used them as an overlay using multiply blending mode in color input. Multiply keeps black tones and make white transparent. After that, I made a similar map where I want to keep only the lines between the bricks and use them as a bump. In this way, I keep the tone of the background photo but upgrade it with a lot of details and increase the resolution. The front part of the hotel is too stretched and it is not usable. This is where the background photo serves mainly as a reference for modeling and texturing. I created a low poly front of the hotel with a brick and glass texture and it looks good in the background. It is only important that we keep a similar color tone and shape of the hotel. Now we need lighting. In the reference photo, we can see that it's a sunset. I tried to find the most similar one on Polyhaven. In this part, it is necessary to invest time and get as many options as possible. Rotate them until the most suitable angle is found. Car models are the most important part of the scene because they are the most in focus. Quality models are very important here, so I use the paid add-on transportation. Fortunately, we also have a classic car category that I need. I decided on reflective materials because they blend better into the environment. Reflections from the car are an unimportant detail for realism and are mostly seen on the back of the car due to the angle of the camera, and they reflect what is behind the camera. Behind the camera, I placed a cube that blocks the light and pretends to be buildings, so the reflections is not realistic. I want a reflection of the city and other cars that are behind the car in focus. I get that by placing photos of the city connected into a emission node behind the car. Now we have a reflection on the car that gives a lot of details. Now we can fill the scene but also cover the bad parts with 3D models. Here I use combination of my own models that I created in the past with models from the other sources. My shop and neon sign asset packs that you can download on Patreon or YouTube join are very useful in this case. The shop pack consists of 8 high quality but also quite low poly shops which in this case are ideal for replacing bad parts in the scene with high quality models and textures. Shops are adaptable for day and night lighting because they contain neon signs and an interior where we can control the light.
NeonSign asset pack contains 70 NeonSign models, some of them fit nicely into the environment. I also use models that are not mine and I have them in Asset Browser or in add-ons, such as these palm trees and trees from the Botanic add-on and other models. I model at simple lighting poles and use curved objects for the cables. If you look at the reference photo, we can see a strong shadow created by the car. I got it by duplicating the ground, setting it as shadow catcher, then I enable shadow catcher pass which I can now find in Compositor. Then I save the shadow pass and later use it as an overlay. I animated the car by simply placing two keyframes. I could get more detail if I add bumpy geometry to the ground and made the car react to the ground, but I don't know how visible it will be, so I didn't spend time. So I animated the camera using Shakeify add-on. I also animated these random colored emission cubes to add some life to the scene. If you look a little closer, you can also see walking low poly people animated with Mixam. That's in short most of what I made in Blender. After rendering, I have to do color correction and add some effects, which I talk about in detail in my step-by-step -step tutorial. And we have this final result. And this is animation. That's all for this tutorial, you can find the entire tutorial, project files and other tutorials on Patreon link in the description or by clicking YouTube join link. Thank you for watching, if you liked the tutorial please click like and subscribe, this helps the channel a lot. Also check out my other step by step tutorials at the link below.